Hey everyone, I'm uh, happy to introduce to you today the 36 aroma vials of the Lene Du Cafe. This is the Jean Lenoir coffee training kit. It's so important for your specialty coffee association sensory courses and your Q grader. So if you're planning on joining a Q grader course or sensory intermediate, sensory professional to get certified with me, then I hope this video is going to help you. Now stay tuned to the end and watch all throughout. I have a lot of inserts where I insert my digital posters from the art of aroma perception in coffee. Now I'm going to follow up with a four part series where I walk through each of these individually in the rows and I talk about them, kind of some of the impressions about uh, how to understand and how to approach these aroma vials. Now, maybe you don't have access to the kit. If you listen to this in the following four videos, you're going to have a really strong understanding of what to expect. And the way that our olfactory nervous system, our sense of smell and sense of taste works is that it works on historical precedent. And so if you don't have the knowledge and understanding, then even if you approach these aromas and new tastes out in the wild, you don't have language to put to them. So understanding this from a theoretical, from a knowledge basis is critical before you can actually name the flavor. Just like when you were a child and your mother gave you something to eat, your father gave you a new candy or fruit or vegetable, you tasted it, but it wasn't until mom and dad told you what it was that it actually made sense and you registered that's what this is. That's what this Aroma Vial Kit is for. That's how we build the coffee taster flavor wheels and that's how Q graders and coffee sensory professionals around the world, we calibrate and coordinate our language so that we are speaking the same language when it comes to tasting and grading coffees. So I really hope you find this valuable. Lots of links and different ways to connect all throughout this video. If you find it helpful, please add a comment, add a question. I'd love to engage with you and share with your community. So stay tuned and let's jump on in. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Jean Lenoir Lene du Café. So this is an essential piece of training equipment for all sensory professionals in the coffee industry. And if you are taking Specialty Coffee Association foundations, you need to know at least six or nine of these. Intermediate, you need to be jumping in and uh, identifying 12. And then professional, you need to continue to identify. For the Q grader course that we're going to be running, and if you're thinking about taking a Q grader course, you also need to get in your practice and your understanding of the Lene kit. And so here we go. This kit comes with 36 flavor aroma vials. And it's got a really cool lid. Open it up. The book came out of the inside. And then we have a nice chart that identifies our 36 flavors, which correspond with the 36 vials inside. Now each of these vials are labeled. They'll have a one, two, three, four, all the way up to 36. And <clears throat> the great thing about this kit, this is a trademark, a standby for coffee tasting professionals. So if you have the art of aroma perception in coffee, the posters, or you buy the digital version, which I did from the Specialty Coffee Association, then you know these right here, nine, and nine more, 18. Okay, so we have enzymatic, we have our sugar browning, nine more, dry distillation, and nine more, the aromatic taints. All 36 of these which are included on the posters, correspond with the 36 vials. And so when you see flavor notes on a bag of coffee, you're going to see that <clears throat> people use adjectives to describe the coffee. So they might say, this coffee is floral, apricot, honeyed, spicy. And so ideally, in a good coffee flavor note description, you are going to see terms that come directly off of this flavor, uh, art of aroma perception, and these 36 vials. So this has to be our starting point. Just like our coffee taster flavor wheel, we work from the inside and move out. And so the way that we do that 
is using this as a baseline. So that's why this is part of all of the SCA sensory curriculum. It shows up on the green coffee curriculum, the roasting curriculum, but especially the sensory curriculum. And if you can pass SCA sensory skills, you know, intermediate level, you're probably at a great place to step into a Q grader course. A lot of people ask, what do I have to do to prepare for a Q grader course? If you can get to a sensory intermediate level, definitely sensory professional SCA, then you should have no problem. You have to work hard still, but you should have no problem. You shouldn't be afraid with moving into a Q grader course. So on this first video, I'm just going to jump in real quick and run through these 36 so that we can have a good understanding of what's inside this kit. And then I'm going to follow up with four more videos and I'd like to walk through each of the nine. So I'm going to classify the nine accordingly. Now you'll have to bear with me because I bought the Chinese language kit. That was the only one available from the SCA store. So I do have my handy translations as well going alongside it. But the first one that we get here is earth or earthy. Okay, so there are two different classifications and you can use both of these when you're describing coffees. So <clears throat> we have an aroma group. So think of a group which is going to be an umbrella and it's going to include several different, possibly several different uh, aromatic flavors. So an aromatic flavor is more specific than the aroma group. Why is that important? I pulled up my roasting professional curriculum here that I had just put together. And uh, that is a course that's available at howtocoffeepro.com. If you're interested in getting either certified at foundation level or getting ready with primers, those are all available on my website, howtocoffeepro.com. So within this kit and within these posters, there are basically the most important aspects, the aromas that can categorize a coffee. So if you just, in a chemical test tube, if you just put together five, six of these different compounds from this kit and you put it in water, someone would smell that and in a blind tasting where they're not using their eyes, they would say, this has all the characteristics of coffee. Okay, so those are the aroma groups. If we focus on 28 to 30 of these and just select out five or six key aspects, someone will say that is coffee-like. So that's the purpose of this kit, starting as a foundation. Now, uh, Jean Lenoir, they also have uh, kits for wine, for tobacco, other fragrances, but this one is specifically designed for coffee. Within these families, the reason I want to tell you, there's the aroma groups. And so the aroma groups are labeled on one side of this card that comes inside of the book. The book describes in detail as well. But basically you have earthy, fruity, sweet, caramel-like, phenolic or smoky, sulfurous or roasty, and then spicy. And so we're going to go through each one of those, like I said, just one by one. And then I'll do a more in-depth dive of what each one smells like. So if you, so here's the takeaway. If you don't have one of these kits or if you can't practice this kit before you jump into an SCA course or before you jump into your Q grader course, that's okay. But what you want to do is you really want to begin to learn and memorize and create the framework for when you do encounter these. You want to create the mental framework so that when you're at a table and you have to blindly smell and choose from 12 of the 36 aroma vials, you will already have this understanding. You've done the mental work. So then all you have to do is sensory identification. And that's how we calibrate. That's how we stay on top of our sensory game is that we hold all of the knowledge secure and then we come back and we just refresh our senses to make sure that what we're smelling and identifying lines up with the memorized, the logic that doesn't change. Okay? so. Uh, number one, we have earth and earth is really easy. It's part of the aroma group earthy. And there's only really one, uh, aspect in earthy and that's earth. So number one, earthy. Number two, we have potato. So potato is part of the green family, um, green or vegetal. 
So there's a green vegetal family, which includes potato. We also have green vegetal, which is garden peas. That's number three. Green vegetal, which is cucumber. Okay, so if you have a light roasted underdeveloped coffee, you come into that and you smell the fragrance, maybe you smell the aroma, maybe you have this aftertaste and you say, it's very green, it's very veg vegetal, like cucumber. Or it's, okay, so that was the first four. Number five, we move into a new category, the aroma group, and that is dry. Dry, woody, okay? So dry and woody, number five, is straw. And you'll hear things like papery or cardboard. Well, really, it should be straw. When we just go back to the very foundations of these 36 flavor aroma vials, the dry straw is something that happens often in aged and old coffees. Number six is cedar. So this is that woody. Um, it also moves into spicy, but cedar. And it's a type of pine tree, so it has this resinous quality to it. Number seven, seven is spicy. So we're moving into the spice family, dry distillation. Okay, so seven is clove, clove-like. Now, depending on where you got uh, your Christmas cookies, what kind of uh, the things that your grandma might have made for you at the holidays or different recipes, clove can also show up in meat. Clove, clove-like. So when you have something that's kind of spicy and has that, we like to use things like baking spices or spicy, but we should use clove-like. Let's start with these core foundational principles. And then later when we get wild expanded flavor wheels, that's when we, after we've established the foundation, that's when we move out to the more uh, specific, more detailed descriptions. Although clove-like is very dis descriptive and very detailed. Uh, number eight is pepper. So black pepper. This is part of that spice family. And pepper does show up if you've, especially if you've ever found, uh, you know, peppercorns, you're going to have this very fresh aromatic peppercorn quality. Well, um, pepper is one of our core 36 compounds that is frequently found in coffee aromas. Number nine is coriander seed. This is still in the spicy family. Coriander is, maybe it's more of a British English term for what we say in American English, cilantro. So cilantro seed, coriander seed, this is going to be kind of that spicy, it's a little more sweet than pepper would be, but it is in that spicy family. And then finally, number 10, one that we all love, is vanilla. So vanilla is also part of the spicy family but it's also sweet. So there are multiple categories that come down within these aroma groups. I'm just not going to go into all of them. Number 11, tea rose. So a tea rose is, you can think of like a British high tea, right? You're having a, you're having a nice setting and you have the rose garden outside and you have the tea and the roses. So you have this specific tea rose, right? So it's a very floral and we've moved into the floral family. Now, floral has a lot of different groups, but specifically we have tea rose and coffee blossom. So identifying these years and years ago, I have a link to the original Le Nou de Café Jean Lenoir YouTube video. I love it. I can't believe that not many people have watched that video on YouTube. Maybe it was just because it was put out before marketing was a thing or they didn't worry about it. But that's a really great video and I'll recommend that as well, a link to that. Okay, so we have tea rose and then coffee blossom. Coffee blossom's a little hard. It could smell like a lot of blossoms, but that's specifically the language we want to use as cupping professionals, sensory professionals, cue grading professionals. Let's use that coffee blossom language. Number 13, fruity. Fruity moves us into a whole new category. It's still within that sweet and floral and it has overlaps, but the first one, number 13, is coffee pulp. What is pulp? It's that inside of the wood. It's that soft, uh, fragrant, sweet aspect of wood, coffee pulp. Okay, so we'll get things like woody and we'll, you know, we'll try to use different language around it. It's also fermenty, it's whiny. And so coffee pulp is one of our core 36. It's number 13. 
Number 14 is black current like. So you can say black current or current like. You know, red current is also current like, and so we might have this current like aspect. I'm not going to go into too much detail. We got to get through these. 15, lemon. Lemon is a core attribute we find within the fruity coffee family. Apricot, number 16. Apricot number 16 is a beautiful, beautiful smell. You know, people might want to say, oh, it smells like peach or it smells like stone fruit. Well, we need to just go ahead and use the word apricot. That's number 16, part of our fruity family. 17, apple. Apple, of course, is a big family. There's so many different kinds of apples. Green apples, red apples, sweet apples, tart apples. But apple is just that foundational core starting point. This coffee is fruity. It's fruity like apple. That's how we use number 17 in describing our coffees. Number 18, we're moving into a new animal uh, aroma group. So animal or animalic, depending on your translation, how you use that. Number 18 is butter, fresh butter. And so butter is, sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Okay, so depending on how strong that butter is, number 18 is butter, and it's commonly found in coffee. 36 of the thousands we had to choose from, fresh butter is number 18. Number 19, honeyed. So not honey, but honeyed. It smells like honey, and it's used like an adjective, number 19. It's part of that animal group because honeys, <laughs> bees, make honey. Honeys make bees. Uh, bees make honey. Number 19. Very sweet also. And then we have number 20, which is leather. Leather, of course, the skin, hide of animals, dried. So number 20, leather. Uh, some, a lot of times in your dark roasted coffees, this can be a, this can be a quality aspect. Um, maybe with older or baggy coffees, you know, leather can become a problem as well. So we'll look at this as they break down into these categories. You will see where some are aromatic taints. Others can be borderline on taint or quality, especially when you have aged coffees or you have dark roasted coffees, for example. 21, basmati rice. This moves us into the toasty family. So the toasty aromatic group has the most because coffee, when we think of coffee, we just think of this roasty, warm, toasty sugar browning element but the first one there is basmati rice so depending on what kind of rice you eat and where you've traveled into the in the world this is that beautiful fragrant indian basmati rice southeast asian all right number 21 number 21 was basmati rice number 22 is toast toast is part of the toasty family. All right, so toast is part of the toasty family. And uh, so number 23 is malt. 23 malt, this is that like, uh, if you've seen dark beers, black beers, uh, Guinness is the most famous. Okay, this is a dark roasted grain and it has this smoky dark roasted grain quality, malt. And it's used in a lot of beers, especially those dark black beers. So malt is part of the toasty family. Uh, maple syrup. Maple syrup is an important aspect of coffee. That sweet, sweet, uh, toasty quality. Something that comes out of that kind of distillation, if you will. And so uh, number 24 is maple syrup. Number 25. Number 25 is also toasty, caramel. So caramel, burnt sugars that come through that coffee. Caramel is just classic and one of the most important attributes of roasted coffee. Number 25, caramel. Number 26, 26 is dark chocolate. Okay, so we talk about chocolate, milk chocolate, chocolate is in our coffee, but specifically dark chocolate is part of this 36 vial kit. And so, uh, using that language, this is the toasty, sweet family, and dark chocolate is what we're looking for. Number 27, 27 is roasted almonds. And so almond, and especially that roasted almond, is something that is just categorically inside of coffee. It's so common to coffee. And it's a wonderful attribute in our coffee. So 
Number 27 is roasted almonds. 28. 28, roasted peanuts. Sorry? Yeah, roasted peanuts. Okay, so peanut and raw peanut, maybe those are bad things and they would be used in negative ways, but roasted peanuts is a quality aspect of coffee. And we love roasted peanuts. Roasted peanuts have a good characteristic, kind of that fresh roasted peanuts, part of that toasty, sweet, nutty family inside of our coffee. Number 29 is roasted hazelnuts. Okay, so not everyone in the world has had a hazelnut or a roasted hazelnut, but this is one of those core aspects that was determined in the aroma flavors, and this aromatic flavor is part of that toasty group. Number 29, roasted hazelnuts. Now it's hard to distinguish between the different nuts. When you have a kit like this, you can start to smell. You find one is sweeter, one is maybe deeper, denser, one is more nutty, forward. So you have to find some of those aspects because number, two, number 30 is another nut. Number 30 is walnut. Walnut is a, another part of the toasty family and one of our nuts. All right, number 31. Number 31 is cooked beef. And cooked beef can come up and it does have this aspect. Now there's certain parts of boiled beef or roasted beef, different parts of that cooked process where cooked beef number 31 shows up. 32, smoke. Of course, if you've got dark roasted coffee or if you're roasting and baking anything, you're going to have smoke. And so number 32, smoke, really easy to identify. Number 33, pipe tobacco. Pipe tobacco is uh, it's an interesting one. And tobacco has a lot of similarities with coffee, just in terms of the way we roast or the way um, some of the aromatic, volatile aromatics come through. So pipe tobacco is number 33 inside of our kit. Number 34 is roasted coffee. So number 34, this is the last of our toasty uh, category. Number 34 being roasted coffee has its own unique smell. And so seldom would anyone put roasted coffee on a flavor description for a coffee bag, but of course roasted coffee is going to be part of the core aromatic family inside of the aromatics found in coffee. Number 35 will be medicinal. Medicinal is a new element. 35 and 36 are part of this chemical group. And medicinal has um, this chemistry, chemical, medicinal, chemical aspect to it, which does happen, unfortunately, and, it, and is commonly found in coffee, especially dark roasted or different transporting and storage issues that come up in the green coffee. 36, finally, is rubber. Rubber, um, maybe you'll hear with medicinal and rubber, rubber you'll hear petroleum, kind of those oil-based products. And so number 36, rubber, is going to close out our kit for the Lene du Café. And this aroma vial kit is just that. They are aromas. And the way that we take them, like number one, earth, we might shake up the container here, shake up the container here, and just open the lid. And then I'm going to hold the lid and the container right next to each other and just smell both of them. All right, and then you screw it back on and you put it here. You don't wanna put them too close. You don't wanna to touch your nose with them and get the aromatics on your nose. You close them back up when you're all finished. If you have a book, if you have the paper, you store those away. And when we slide the lid back on, lid slides on and the book goes in. There we go. That was the Lene du Café by Jean Lenore and 36 aroma vials for coffee. So I hope this was a great introduction. We'll dive deeper into these four. We'll also look at the new cupping sensory handbook, which was uh, released by the SCA and will bring in some connections with the coffee sensory lexicon, which was published by the World Coffee Research. So that is a free PDF I can link and share with you. The coffee cupping handbook by the SCA is a digital purchase or a hard copy purchase. 
And um, I hope these videos are helpful for you. If you like, please share or subscribe or pass them on to a friend. And if you want to get into any coffee training, you can get started with me, How To Coffee Pro. Uh, reach out and connect. I'd love to hear from you. Keep up the good work and get stronger growing in coffee together. See you next time.